first lesson Luke chapter 12 verses 27 to 30 consider the lilies how they grow they toil not they spin not and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these if then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven how much more will he clothe you O ye of little faith and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Brethren, the entire world is shaking. Human beings no more feel secure because they do not know Christ. They are like a gun which when fired produces only one sound but cannot kill a rat. The worldly people claim to know God, but they cannot put into practice even an iota of God's word in the Bible. The Brotherhood Pulpit Brethren, when Brotherhood Pulpit, a program disseminating the everlasting gospels live on television, was first introduced by the father in Aqua Ibom State Television. The manager in charge of the station was opposed to the idea. His belief was that the program will not last and the aim would not be achieved. Most people in Aqua Ibom State jeered at the idea. After watching the program the first day, they thought the father was wasting his time and energy. But the reverse is the case today. Brotherhood has spread throughout the nooks and crannies of the state through the instrumentality of the Brotherhood pulpit. And most of the inhabitants of the state today have accepted that the Father is a living reality. Brethren, I hereby inform you that there exists no other power in the entire world other than the Word of God. When you have the Word of God, you have life. And with the Word of God, all problems are solved. I want you to understand that except the Father approves something, such a thing cannot work. Recall a case about Port Harcourt brethren some time ago. They tried all they could to bring brotherhood doctrines to the grassroots, but all their efforts proved abortive. But the moment Brotherhood Pulpit was aired on the River State Television, the minds of the generality of the people were positively redirected towards the Father's teaching. Today, most of the inhabitants of the state stream into Brotherhood Bethel for deliverance. Some newly baptized members testify how the father manifests to them physically this is to certify how the word of god is powerful therefore your duty now is to go out and preach the word of god to people do not complain of not having money because money cannot give life to man 
It is only the word of God that gives life everlasting. Carnality is a demoralizer, brethren. The word of God is the Holy Spirit. The word of God is life, wisdom, and wealth. A brother came here and testified of how he used millions of naira to bribe some person in order to improve the fortunes of his business. I want to tell you that such a testimony is baseless because every bit of his word is connected with vain things. His testimony centered on carnal considerations. He did not talk about spiritual matters. He was so careful that he did not mention the Holy Spirit, which is Christ. Such a testimony is ineffective and does not strengthen one's faith or foundation because it's carn because of its carnal contents. And this constitutes the brother's problem. So brethren, if you would let the word of God dwell richly in you and also allow the Spirit of God to abide in you, you will not have any problems. If you have the word of God, you will not be worried about life. You neither will plan for anything nor suffer any lack in your life. Above all, it is quite certain that you will have the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus Christ sufficiently in you. Father Olumba is all and in all. Beloved brethren, I have made available myself to you. Our Lord Jesus Christ also gave himself to you. That was why he came and died for the remission of your sins. Have you now dedicated yourself for the Father so that his divine will might be manifested in you? Have you now made up your mind to preach the word of God to people? You are therefore mandated to reach out to the entire world and preach Christ to all the creation of the Father. Let them know that the kingdom of God is now on earth because the world must surely imbibe this truth. Example of a false prophet. Red Rain. You must have heard what transpired between Dr. Haida Hosa and his American counterpart. And indeed the entire world have come to their realization that Haida Hosa was carnally minded. He preached nothing but money. The wording of Ida Osa's songs was nothing but money. And every speech he gave was a cry for nothing but money. In spite of all the money and the melodious music that came from his mouth, Ida Osa disguised himself as a prophet of God who preached the word of God and successfully founded a church. Yet all his activities were built on no other thing than money. The secret behind rulership. Brethren, brother of the cross and star has come on earth to expose man's falsehood one after the other. Hence, I keep telling you, to go out and preach this truth to the world so that their minds and intellect may be broadened. Brethren, this is not a time for idleness. This is not a time for you to sit down and seek for mundane things of this world. Rather, it is the right time for you to go out and preach Christ to the entire world 
so that the scale will fall off people's eyes. If you read the gospel, uh, he, if you read that gospel, that titled, He Who Is to Rule, you will realize that the Holy Spirit is really at work. More so, you will observe that the information contained in that gospel is beyond human comprehension. Therefore, if you denounce the things of this world and surrender yourself to the Father and seek after the natural love of God, you will finally arrive at this recondite wisdom on how to rule. The content of this particular gospel is very interesting and beyond prejudice. With this, brethren, I hope the idea of fixing your mind on what to eat and what to put on has departed from you. For the time is now ripe for you to get into the vineyard and bring in the sheep of God who are still outside. If you visit the overseas countries, you would realize that the people over there have really seen the glory of the Father. The two brothers from Louis in England, Christ's servant Daniel and George, recently came here and testified of how the Father is manifesting his glory in Europe. Therefore, you are advised to gird your lines because this is not a time to joke about. Forget about materialism for it will lead you to nowhere. The worldly people claim to be the prophets of God. Ironically, before they set out for any journey, they will first of all consult their oracle. Some even use magic and kerchiefs. But here in this kingdom, there is nothing like idolatry. If you come in here, you will not see anything of that nature. It is only the Holy Spirit that is at work. He is omnipresent. God and His presence is felt by all and sundry throughout the entire world. Let obedience rule over sentiment, brethren. Some members of this fold do not believe in the Holy Spirit, nor do they have faith in Him. Hence, they come in here to request for a holy oil. I am telling you that those things are meant for unbelievers. If you would trust and obey the injunctions of the Holy Spirit, you will never have any problem in your life. All you need to do is kneel down and knock your head three times in acknowledgement to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Instantly will take charge and fulfill your request. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Luke chapter 14 verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Think a little further, beloved brethren. Have you heard that? No. How many of you have forsaken the lust? over mundane things of this world for the sake of surrendering to Christ? Or is it possible for a new wine to be put into old wine skin? 
Likewise, can a new material be used to pass an old material? Or can a servant serve two masters? These questions are meant for you to answer because if you observe carefully, you will see that no one has made up his mind to forsake the mundane things of this world and totally surrender himself to God. Therefore, your problem right from time immemorial is traceable to the fact that you have held tenaciously to materialism and had not made up your mind to let them go at the expense of surrendering yourself wholeheartedly to Christ. But if you should, then you will see that there are many ways the Father could use you in manifesting his, this divine glory. That is why when I look at you, I discover that you are only interested in being rich overnight. With this, it is apparent that the Spirit of God in you is on exile and at this juncture you are totally divorced of love, of peace, of joy and other attendant benefits of the Holy Spirit. Similarly, it is quite impossible for you to be rich materially and at the same time give in to the service of God. The Unrevealed Mysteries Beloved brethren, I have several mysteries to reveal to you. This is so because I have discovered that there is little or no faith in you and should I reveal these mysteries to you now? Many of you would express doubt in me and some will even run away. Therefore, I need to take you gradually and systematically until a final transformation is effected in you for the better. This calls for when our brother Paul met with that necromancer and at the, and at the instance of preaching the gospel of Christ to the necromancer, the Holy Spirit came out of Paul and entered the necromancer's body and he felt great impact of the word of God and immediately became converted to Christ. I can speak a word and gradually the work of total transformation in you is achieved. But the question is, have you decided to deny the world and its affection and turn to Christ? Make your body a sacrifice for honor. Brethren, I have observed that there is still that fear in you on how you could do away with the world and its enticement. If sincerely this is the case, how will it be possible for you to become a true Christ servant or disciple of God? Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. This was from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Brethren, if you refrain from speaking vain words and be devoted to the Lord Almighty only, you will be a vessel of honor suitable for his use to manifesting his divine glory. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sacrificed and meet for the 
master's use and prepared unto every good work. This was in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 20. This was in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Brethren, in spite of the above quotation, there is none among you that is yet prepared to set aside him or herself to the Lord for his use. I have also seen your plans on how to amass wealth to yourself. These plans have tools in you, thereby making you so reluctant to decide to be of service in the Father's house. The Father is willing to use you to accomplish his task as well as manifest his glory. Brethren, the kingdom of God is now on earth with all the facilities needed for its operation. It is ready to provide you with all good things. The problem lies in your reluctance to forsake the base things of this world and surrender completely to God. For the scripture says, whosoever speaks of himself, seek for his own glory. He that speaketh of himself, seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory, that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. That was in John chapter 7 verse 18. It is rather unfortunate that all of you are seeking for your own glory. In the process, you have misused the power bestowed on you. But, Later complain that you lack power to work for the Father. Is the power not within your reach? Are you sure the power has not been given to you? And should you be bestowed with this power, will you be able to use it to the glory of the Father? This is because the moment this power is given to you, you will claim it to be an inborn thing, thus seeking for your own glory and overlooking the fact that it was given to you by the Father. Brethren, do you know that the moment you come and listen to the divine gospel of the Father, that you are filled with power. But the moment you move out from here and begin to yearn for the base things of this world, the power is withdrawn from you entirely because a servant cannot serve two masters at a time. For the Bible says, If any man come to me and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That was in Luke chapter 14 verse 26. Therefore, anyone that would want to become a true servant of Christ must totally do away with the lust for carnal things and practice the injunctions of God. Read the golden text again. Golden text, Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Lost shelter not, brethren. Do not involve yourself in vain communication 
rather preoccupy your mind with Christ and how to practice his teaching because money, food, clothes, motor cars, bicycle, musical set, house, and other mundane things will not give you life. They are base things. Therefore, always listen to the word of God and put sin into practice. For in so doing, you will gain everlasting life. Brethren, a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.